everybody, my name is Andrea of MacAndreas.com. Today I am sitting here with Cabria Thomas. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for agreeing to do this interview with me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Kabria Thomas is the owner of amazing scented lines that she had made herself named Signature Scents yes, by, hand. by hand, of <laughs> course, because she had to make it. I basically tried a few of it and what I fell in love with was the Shea Butter. Literally, I bought it at the yes. event I met you at mm -hmm. and literally three weeks it was done. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about your company. Um, so Signature Sense by Hand um, is based in Brooklyn and the company was founded um, last year actually so I've actually been doing this business for a full year now and um, I love scents and I just decided why not you know create a perfume line and it wasn't until I started doing research on how to manufacture uh, the products is when I realized that you know some perfumes are you know really harmful for the skin and can cause skin cancer so I decided how hold on what <laughs> what yeah like some of the um, chemicals and ingredients that are in perfume or you know shampoos conditioners what we put right. on our makeup you know that that's in makeup and things like that deodorant lotions creams all that stuff can cause skin cancer like there are certain chemicals in it that you know shouldn't be worn on the skin so wow. when i saw those um articles i said okay well i don't want to sell something like this um i'd rather know what's in my product be able to tell my customers what's in the product um so i just did more research and see you know can i make this and then i said okay well something i i can make so it was just really trial and error for me with mm -hmm. um blending the essential oils together to find that perfect scent um, my first scent took about three months to make. I was just kind of over it. What was your first scent? Yes, um, yours, my first scent. Um, I think you had the body butter version of it. Oh, um, yes. yes. Three weeks, guys. I finished <laughs> it three weeks. Yes. And um, I just kind of wore it out. I was just over it, and I just wore it, and I got compliments that same day. So I said, okay, well, this is the scent. This is something I'm doing. Um, the first time I sold it, I was actually vending in Baltimore, and we were buying two at a time. And I was like, okay, well, I'm doing wow. something right. And... Um, people kept asking me can you make cologne can you make this can you make that and then you know I started making out their scents and now I'm here that is beautiful mm -hmm. it's so funny because yesterday I saw this post that somebody posted about equal style gel mm -hmm. how that is not good to use yeah. because it does have harmful chemicals mm -hmm. but perfume mm -hmm. like yeah you want to wear it to smell good mm -hmm. and it's so interesting perfume has that as well yep mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff um and i was i was like what this is crazy because i grew up wearing perfume having a dresser full of different perfumes and there are certain ingredients that can cause that um and i've had a few people in my life who have had um cancer and when you have cancer there are certain things you can't wear you have to be very cautious of it and mm. that's one of the reasons why that is interesting mm -hmm. So what makes your products different from other products that are on the market? Um, well, obviously the fact that I make it, which is different. Um, a lot of people have been telling me that they've never seen a African-American woman making perfume. It's usually her selling it, but right. um, making it is completely different. So I think that's what makes it different. Um, and being the fact that in the beauty industry, it's mainly African-American women that are purchasing these products. So sure. to have a woman behind it who can actually relate to you and your struggles and things like that can actually you know um you know help you know you with what you're trying to do when you're um making that decision of what you're going to purchase so um i think that's what makes us different the fact that it's also vegan and all natural um there are a lot of people who are very cautious of what they put on their skin to, so to have someone who actually made the product and can tell you what's actually in each and every product that you're purchasing i think is a very special experience for all of my customers and clients. So interestingly, when I did my research on you, I found out before you embarked on this, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say fragrance making journey, mm -hmm. making sense, you were a stylist. Yes, yes. So how did that transition happen? Because that's really interesting. <laughs> so I 
actually do still do um, the personal styling aspect of things so um, that was my first business my first baby and I've been doing it for about five years now um, and honestly it started for me when I was selling my services in DC there's um, an event called DC Fashion Week and um, I wanted to get new clients and things of that nature and I realized I um, had a table I had you know a bunch of brochures and I was just ready to tell everyone about my services but sometimes people are a little hesitant to talk to you about your services because there isn't like a physical product on the table mm. so then I said to myself okay well I don't want people to feel you know nervous to chat with me so I was trying to figure out ways of what can I do to make things better or should I sell a product if I'm gonna sell a product what kind of product am I gonna sell what do I love to do what do I love to wear or anything of that nature and I decided I love perfume it just kind of hit me like okay I have a bunch of perfume on my dresser it's perfume um, and then the name just kind of hit me in a dream you know thinking about you know what am I gonna call this perfume what am I gonna call the name of the business and the brand and things of that nature so um, that's when it happened I just did the research and I was like okay well I'm gonna make this and I was just literally in my living room mixing the oils together um, I had my mother-in-law um, smell some of the scents I was like okay how does this smell how does this smell and she was like okay it smells good put a little bit more of this mm -hmm. put a little bit more of patchouli and I was like okay and then um, the day I got over it, I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to walk outside. Let's see what happens. And then I was getting my eyebrows threaded, you know, doing groceries, laundry, all that stuff. And people were complimenting me. So I said, okay, well, maybe I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I started looking for events to vend at. And Baltimore was my first event. So, do you do this full time or do you have a day job? Um, I actually do this full time. Yesterday actually was marked my 18th month anniversary of working full-time for myself. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. That is huge though because within six months most people and I can speak for myself as well <laughs> that you kind of stir back in looking for that mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So what is your favorite scent because this is her scent that we have behind <laughs> us right now and you have a but a lot of different goodies on the mm -hmm. table right here. Yes. So what is what what is your number one pick out of all the goodies you have? Um, well, for me, I like to call my scents. They're like my baby, my my babies, my children um, that I've given birth to. Mm -hmm. So my first will always be my first scent. Yours, the one that took me like three months to make. This one? Yes. Yours? That the, one. The bottle's basically yes, done. You yes. See? yes. This yes. is very popular. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's one of my favorite scents. It's very mm. sweet, Smells floral. Good. Um, and I feel like the scents um, replicate my personality all together. Mm -hmm. So no matter how many scents I make, I can have 500 different scents, but yours will always be my favorite because it's my baby. So what has been the biggest struggle that you face within this entrepreneurial journey? A lot, actually. Um, it's crazy that you say that because um, yesterday when I was thinking back about, okay, this is 18 months I've been doing this, um, and I was like, okay, I want to do a live talking about, you know, what were some of the struggles that I faced because I feel like a lot of people that I talk with are entrepreneurs, but they're afraid to take that step. Um, and I think for me, um, with the fragrances, a lot of women have their go-to scent and sometimes they're afraid to try different scents, um, especially if it's a new brand that they're not familiar with or anything like that. So um, I think that's been one of my struggles is trying to make pe get people to be a little bit more open-minded, um, especially when it's, you know, a woman that can actually relate to her and relate to her struggles. Um, I think also the fact of being young too kind of makes it a struggle for me because I think sometimes people may not take me a little bit as seriously as I would like them to just because mm. of my age the age difference um, I'm trying to think what else um, I think that's really it that I can think of off the top of my head um, is just that and just you know do, because I do this full-time as an entrepreneur just figuring out you know how I'm gonna squeeze you know money here and there because you know sometimes there are gonna be slow months sometimes there are gonna be fast weeks but I have to be able to balance out um, everything balance out my funds you know figuring out okay what do I need to order more of mm -hmm. and things of that nature so um, just being really optimistic and staying very positive um, without a support system you have literally nothing like sometimes there are days where I'm just like 
oh my gosh, I did not make a sale this week. What's going on? Can I pay my phone bill? And then someone contacts me and they're like, hey, I want to order, you know, a set of this. Oh, um, I recently did a shoot in Miami and she contacted me. I was like, oh my gosh, we're going to do this? All right, cool. Um, so just the networking and things of that nature. You know, I'm a very spiritual person. So um, the little seeds that you plant will eventually come back to you. It just takes time. So it's from what it sounds like from us talking right now, mm -hmm. you sent it by hand, sent by hand. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm saying it incorrectly. Signature sent by hand to yeah. people. <laughs> Signature <laughs> sent by hand. Um, you basically was an entrepreneur before then. Mm -hmm. So was it easy with that transition when you went full time because you were an entrepreneur mm -hmm. stylist or did you have a day job while you be, or you was, um, while you styled people? I did have a day job. I was actually working with the interior designer. And the one thing I did love about this job was that I was working with a small business owner. So I understood what she needed help with. I understood that this wasn't like a regular job where, you know, I'm just doing what she says. Like I gotta, you know, if I see there are extra, you know, things that need to be done, I'll help her because we kind of understand each other and communicate that way. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing I did love about her was that she understood that I did have another business. So it was like I let her know during the interview process that this is a part-time thing. My business is full-time. Like this That is, is interesting because most people are scared to even tell them. Yeah, that. Mm -hmm. no, I was at the point where I was just like, no, I can't have my dream come second it has to be first so if i'm doing a job it has to be part-time and they have to know that i have a business and you know if i have a client on the weekends and you know i gotta take a day off you know she has to know and we were able to communicate and because she knew that during the interview process before she even hired me um she understood that and we were able to fit a schedule to fit her needs and my needs as well that is really beautiful. I know, I know. It's rare, but rare. thank God for her because without her, um, she actually recommended me to take a course um, for my business, for my image consulting business. It's called Weibo. I forget what the the words stand for, but um, it's basically a program for entrepreneurs to learn the ins and outs of business. So, you know, when you're filing taxes, accounting, branding, your colors, the fonts, all that all those small details are really important. So thank God for her. Thank God for her being in my life um, and being able to take that course and just learn more about my target market. It sounds like you have more than just the fashion and the sense because you said your image consulting business. Yeah. Well. So, so how many businesses do you have? Like I have two, um, but with my um, fashion styling, it's um, image consulting, wardrobe styling, and mm -hmm. personal shopping. So they're all, in a sense, kind of the same, but um, the image consulting is your overall image. How can I help improve your overall image, whether it's for um, your work, profession, or just, you know, your personal your personal. When you say life. image, you mean like this only? Yes, your or image. you mean as far as like how you present yourself? How you present yourself. Um, meaning with the clothes that you wear so okay. um, I have a lot of clients um, and we usually work on a professional basis mm -hmm. of their clothing um, and it's not only about you know shopping for them and finding clothes what's in their wardrobe and stuff but it's all about um, their self-esteem so I'm helping them build their self-esteem and helping them see themselves in a different light because you know dressing one way every day is and you feel dull and you don't have any colors in your wardrobe it makes you feel you know Blah, kind of. Right, so if you right. have someone that you hire, an actual image consultant who knows, you know, what colors are Cabrilla. in <laughs> or what works well for your skin tone and what you need help with, then I can come in and actually help you see yourself in a different light. So seeing yourself wear different colors, wearing accessories, having your hair differently, you know, styled differently, that you know, gives you a boost of confidence. It's true. Yeah. It's true because when you look good, you feel good. Exactly. That's my motto. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is? Yes, oh. yes. <laughs> Check me out. Yes, yes, that's my model. So that's um, what I do, and I feel like the scents kind of incorporate together yeah. um, very well because when you smell good, you also do feel good as well, it is too. True. So it it's kind of your overall image all together and, you know, your aroma. 
So it's interesting because everything you do seems like they have their own lane, but they all fit exactly. in the same picture mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. So they're all under the image consulting company, the scent, the scent and the um, styling. So it's funny they you say that. Separate entities? I tried that um, in the beginning. I actually uh, did yours, and I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna put this a part of my image consulting firm, and we're gonna sell it together and things of that nature. And I realized that um, there are two different markets, two different types of clientele. Two different types of people um, need the image consulting and um, need the scent. So um, it wasn't until I realized that that I needed to kind of separate the businesses. Um, in a sense, yeah, here and there I do have a few of my image consulting clients who do purchase my scents, but ultimately it's two different um, target markets. And I, when I tried to blend it together, it wasn't working. So I said, okay, let me separate it. And that's what's been working for me. So what are the things you did to grow your company? Um, well, I did a lot of stuff, but I think the key thing that I did when I decided that I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to do this full time is I told my closest friends and I told my in-laws, I told, you know, my small circle around me that this is what's happening. This is what I'm doing. And, um, I expected, you know, different feedback, I expected them to look at me like, okay, you're crazy. Like you quitting your job. What's going on, girl? Are you, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Um, but instead people were very happy for me. Um, they saw that I was very dedicated and motivated for, um, what I was doing and they saw the bigger picture. Um, so instead they just supported me you know full force and I let them know like hey I told my friends hey we can't go out every weekend when you want to go to the bar you know I can't go all the time but I can go for like the big big events if it's your birthday or we're celebrating something big um but yeah I mean I just told my support system um and I think when I have those bad days when I feel like nothing is happening i have my support system my support team to kind of step in and say okay listen this is what you did you remember all these things that you did in the past and yeah you're here now yeah things are tough but you know plant those little seeds and eventually they'll sprout so um for me i think without my support system my support team i would be nothing without my boyfriend my in-laws my close friends i don't know where i would be without them honestly that is beautiful mm -hmm. that because support within the entrepreneurial journey means a lot and it makes a huge difference on how far you could go so mm -hmm. it's really beautiful like who exactly is in your support system other than your boyfriend your <laughs> it's a very process. very small small team really? um yeah because um when i started this process um i just got rid of a lot of negativity in my life because you know when you have you know those negative things going on you're you're not focused on what you need to be focused on so True. there was a lot of people i had to get rid of and we just kind of like lost um connection there were a, a lot of friends that i stopped talking to um there was one friend in particular who i remember said uh i talk about my business too much and i was like okay what's going on you know um so there was just a lot of people i had to get rid of but um for now my support system is my brother um uh, my boyfriend his parents um i have a few friends very few close friends um carmen who you met today mm -hmm. who's also um one of my, my part very talented system. yes very yes talented. she is we always are working together and um i think that's really about it it's just very very small and i'm very happy with you know everyone who's on my team that is beautiful especially with the friends aspect of things because yes. sometimes having the business could either make or break the friendship and exactly you are able to keep it it's beautiful mm -hmm. yes what have you have any mouse have you had any milestones out of yet um i have actually i've had a few um, because your industry is very interesting yes. and it's very unique yes because it's rare you come across someone saying that yeah i create sense and mm -hmm. she clearly has her own have it all done because look at this label people mm -hmm. look at this label it's kind of like it's professional mm -hmm. yeah so um some of the milestones so i think for me one of the things that i've experienced is um and I, let me know if you've experienced this too mm -hmm. um sometimes people get jealous you know and it's crazy, you know, you're trying to, you know, come together, both businesses come together and we're trying to build and grow together. But why? I don't know. I, I don't know. That's one of the things that I've, um, 
I've seen last year actually was a lot of jealousy and I was just so confused as to why it was happening um, but you know I had to let go and just keep moving forward um, obviously you know when you're doing this full time you got to squeeze all the money that you can mm -hmm. so there have been moments where I'm just like Ugh, can I pay my phone bill today what's going on you know but um, things happen you know one of those seeds that I, I planted they sprout I don't know what's going on but it happened so um, I think one of the biggest thing is um, just the jealousy aspect of things so it makes it harder for me to get my foot in the door in certain aspects because you know someone's blocking that barrier for me so I have to kind of go around and really? figure my way that out on things yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's funny like I told you earlier if you ever see somebody else copying what you're doing there's no reason for you to be jealous it's like mm -hmm. I'm doing something good yes That's all is you could think mm -hmm. about like I must be doing something good to make you want to copy or try to imitate somehow what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So instead of feeling jealousy, just that's kind of like a you, you're on a good you're on mm -hmm. a good path. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I I the way I see it is instead of ha being jealous, figure out a way of how you guys can work together and do something together. I remember mm -hmm. there was this one event I went to and a vendor was selling freak um scents. Um, not scents, candles. Mm -hmm. And we were sitting right next to each other. I'm like, damn it, how are people going to smell my perfume? And, you know, it's kind of like a little competition, but not really because we have two different... Um Two different products mm -hmm. and instead of being jealous like oh, her per her um, candles stink anyways you know instead of doing that I was like you know what let me you know contact this girl and see if we can connect so now she's gonna I have a new product coming out and we're gonna do candles together beautiful she's gonna make the candles for me and my scents and I'm gonna make some body butters and her candles so instead of you know trying to make it a competition why not work together yeah mm -hmm. that's how it should be technically mm -hmm. how it should be so what would you tell anybody that you would smile told you when you were first starting um i'm trying to think because i watch a lot of interviews and i don't want to sound so like i don't want to sound like everyone but um i think it's really the mindset that you you have to have a strong mindset if you don't then there's absolutely no point in doing this like there there's been weeks and months that you know i have not seen anything but you can't let that make or you can't let that make or break you mm -hmm. um you have to see the bigger picture and but when you say the mindset define it a little bit more um so um let me see if i can think of the example um so i guess i can use this event as an example the diy workshop that we did today mm -hmm. um Carmen and I, our products, again, are not like competition. Mm -hmm. And instead, we decided, okay, why not work together, have a class where we can do this together and um, make it fun for people right. to make things together. So the we, ladies had lots of fun. Yes, today. They, they had all, so much They loved fun. their jewelry that they made and they all yeah, loved their sets. They really, really did. So with the mindset, I just try to figure out uh, ways to be creative and do things differently and network with people and figure out ways our businesses can intertwine together so mm -hmm. even though our products are not the same or even if it's similar how can we work together so that we're both eating mm -hmm. um and i just that's the mindset i try to have and you know when things are tough i really just try to remember all the things that i've accomplished and sometimes what i'll do and I, it may sound crazy is i'll literally go back on my facebook and look at you know some of the things I've done in the past, some of the pictures I've taken, and some of the quotes that I've I've written because that inspires me. You know, I, at that point, you know, I was at my high, I was making money and so on, and then now I'm here, and I'm like, okay, damn, I didn't see a check in a week or so. Mm -hmm. So seeing that just kind of brings me back, like, okay, I did this, I did that, okay, you know, I did some stuff. I'm, you know, things are bad now, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna push through it. So. I'm just curious right now because you your relationship have you have you always been with your boyfriend throughout the whole duration of your entrepreneurial yes, journey? Yes, yes, we have. We so have. how did you manage that? Because sometimes being an entrepreneur, especially a full time entrepreneur, could really sometimes cause a lot of unnecessary tension. Yes, it can. Yes, it so can. how how <laughs> I can't even ask the question like. 
Um, Cause there's so many <laughs> questions to ask in that right there. I know, I know. A lot of people ask me like, what's the secret? Yeah, um, what is it? <laughs> to be honest, um, my boyfriend, he, oh my gosh, he's just amazing. Unfortunately, he's gonna be here today cause he has his own thing as well, which I push him for cause I want him to do his own thing as well. Um, but with him, he wants me to do better. Like he wants me to grow, um, regardless of whether we're together or not, we want the best for one another. Beautiful. So I think with us, um, the secret to this all is really just communication, honestly, you know? We talk literally about everything piece by piece. Um, let him know how the event went, and he asks questions like, okay, what scent sold the most? You know, like he mm -hmm. wants to know, and then he'll give me ideas, well, maybe you should do something like this, or maybe you should mix this, or, you know, and he'll test out my products, and he'll say, oh, the Tux um, soap was amazing, you know? So he has an eye, he's really keen on, you know, what, my business needs so I think the fact that we communicate so often and that he actually really genuinely cares about how my business is growing um, is what helps the relationship um, and I do the same for him for you know the business that he's also growing as mm -hmm. well too. what does one have to do to start a fragrance company because like I said before you are in a very unique market mm -hmm. so what are the things you have to know and if you do want to start a company making your own fragrance mm, so actually a lot I, I remember when I first thought when my business was first just a thought and I reached out to someone and I asked them on their advice on um, what do they think about me starting a fragrance business instead of getting positive feedback I was actually getting um, the opposite uh, they were telling me that you know they know a lot of people who have started a fragrance business mm -hmm. and um, they spent a lot of money and they didn't get a return on their investment um, so I think what's really important is to uh, just listen to your intuition so mm -hmm. if you feel like this is the route that you need to take I think you should definitely follow it um, things do happen you know things pop up I feel like if I didn't decide to go in full force you know full time there would have been a lot of people I've never I would have never met um, a lot of opportunities that I would have never been able to be a part of um, and uh, I think also just trying to stay positive through it all because you know there there's a lot of people who are gonna just down talk you um, and last but not least I think what's also key this is very very important is just to do research you need mm -hmm. to know your market your market um, you know what I did first was I was um, researching what are some popular perfumes that I grew up with um, and what were some scents in there what are certain you know top middle and base notes that were very popular so I would doing a lot of research and I was like okay patchouli rose and middle and base notes yes yes huh? <laughs> yes yeah, so what I was is like, that <laughs> um, so they're just different notes uh, that are in the fragrance so they're kind of like ingredients so you know what scents are in the perfume so for example my scents have um, patchouli rose and jasmine and pink sugar in there so the top middle mm -hmm. and base gives you an idea of what has the most in it so top obviously has mm -hmm. the most middle has you know a medium amount and the base has the least amount obviously mm -hmm. so um, for me, I did a lot, a lot of research on that because you don't want to mix something that you think smells good and no one's buying it. So um, that, is true. that is key with fragrances because women, they care more about the scent before knowing that it's vegan friendly. They it's really true. do. They it's really, true. really do. So um, I think the combination of both makes me different, but I think the scent is like really, 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 really important of knowing the proper set before yes. you create the product. Yes, yes, yes. It's very, very, very important. So how do you find, do you compare it to your personal mm -hmm. sense or how exactly do you find that if you don't know? Um, so one is research. Um, what I do is I'll ask uh, people that I know who would fit in my mar my target market of who I'm trying to sell to. And I ask them, what are some perfumes that you like to wear? Or look at their dresser. What are some perfumes that they have on their dresser that they wear often? Um, and I'll do research. Okay, Okay, what are some notes that are in this um, scent and I realize a lot of scents have like jasmine or mm -hmm. rose in it um, a lot of floral notes so I said okay well my target market they like a lot of floral scents so I want to make my scent have some of those key notes in there so that way when I'm talking to her about the, what's in the ingredients that's in the scent she's like oh patchouli I have a few scents that have patchouli in it I love patchouli let me smell this scent um, mm -hmm. so that's 
what definitely helps me with women who are very like particular on what's on their skin and what they want to smell like um a lot of women like to have scents for um different occasions for when she's right. going out um some like to have you know a perfume that she wears in the office mm -hmm. some like to have day to night scents she wants to wear that one scent everywhere she goes so mm -hmm. i like to have different options for those different types of women everyday women i'm just i'm just still stuck on the um stylist aspect of things <laughs> because it's just so interesting do you so because you have the scented you have the style and you have mm -hmm. the imagery they all go together mm -hmm. do you shop your when you shop when you shop yourself out to clients do you mm -hmm. shop yourself out with everything intertwined in your pitch um not necessarily because um some people may not be interested in certain things so um when i go to certain events some people may be more interested into the sense because right. they're like oh it's here it's a product i can touch it it's tangible it smells good i already know how to dress um <laughs> just give me the perfume you know right, right. but then there's some people that are like uh, i don't really wear scents like that you know i'm more interested in the image consulting so okay. um i get a feel of the person and it also does depend on the type of events that i'm going to um because there, sometimes there are people who i talk to and i'm and you know when we're getting into deeper conversation we start talking about clothes and how they hate shopping and i'm like oh wow this is perfect um let me talk to this person about my image consulting firm and how i can help them stand out and feel confident in what they wear so um it depends on the person but i don't just kind of pitch everything all at once one i don't want to waste my time and my energy if someone's not <laughs> interested um and two you don't want to overwhelm the person with all these right. businesses that you have and they're like okay this person is doing too much yeah they just want my money exactly mm -hmm. so um it just depends on the person and just talking deeper and asking them questions and get a feel of who they are and their personality that helps me know which business um they would be more interested in right so if anybody wants to connect with you, mm -hmm. where can they connect with you at? Ooh, um, so I do have a few outlets on social media, but um, I'll just keep it simple. Um, if you guys are interested in either one, the image consulting or the fragrances, um, you can follow my fragrances at Signature Sense by Hand. Um, that's on Facebook and Instagram. You can check out the website, SignatureSenseByHand.com. And for my image consulting firm, Fashionably Yours, you can follow us on Instagram um, and Facebook, Fashionably Yours NYC. And our website is fashionablyyoursnyc.com. So you just heard the whole thing. So you have just heard it from Kabria Thomas herself. You've heard about the different business ventures that she had going on. Imagery, style, imagery, styling. Mm -hmm. Imagery, styling, same thing, but you have to <laughs> define them differently. Yeah. And the fragrance company that she does have. Mm -hmm. Definitely connect with her if you want to try any of her beautiful scents because listen, I told you I finished the shea butter three weeks. <laughs> three weeks, yes. <laughs> I oil my skin right. Yes, yes. <laughs> my name is Andrea of MacAdrays.com. Definitely look out every Tuesday for more new episodes and more dope entrepreneurs like Kabia Thomas. <laughs> Thank you. <so. laughs> Thank you.